I'm excited. What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we are checking out a guitar brand on my channel for the very first time. And that brand is Ibanez. And this is the Axion Label RG631 ALF. And no, it did not take me five different tries to memorize that. Let's do it. All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle. What I do is I take all sorts of awesome high gain related guitar equipment, record it with a simple setup, and I give you the unprocessed audio on your end. And today I am legitimately very excited because we get to check out a guitar brand that I honestly have next to no experience with. Forming human sentences are difficult. And that brand is obviously Ibanez because I already told you that. So while I was at 42 Gear Street this summer, hanging out with some of my colleagues and meeting up with some brands and stuff, one of those brands was Ibanez. And I was actually really excited to meet up with them because I have been interested in a few of the models that they have released over the last couple of years. So anyways, while I was at 42 Gear Street, I got to talk to and meet the awesome people at Ibanez Europe. They actually explained to me there is a rhyme and a reason behind the model numbers on these guitars. And guess who already forgot it? Me. But if you were curious, yes, there is a reason that they put the numbers and the letters in the names of the models of their guitars. So I'll throw a link down in the description if I find like a forum post or something on the internet that tells you what that is. But for now, we're going belligerent amateur style and I'm just gonna talk out of my ass. Super quick, before we get into the specs and the sounds of this guitar, I gotta send a huge thank you out to Sweetwater because they are actually the ones who provided this guitar and who are sponsoring this video. And of course, for me, it's always super easy to recommend Sweetwater, especially when it comes to buying a new guitar because you get the Sweetwater Guitar Gallery where any guitar over, I believe, the price point of $399, they're gonna have multiple detailed pictures. They're gonna have the weight up there. So you really can go through the options, see which one hits your eye the best, see if you need one that has a lighter weight, you can pick the lightest one out of the lineup. And of course, all of their guitars over that price point also get the 55 point inspection. So they do a secondary quality control check. So thanks again to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in this Ibanez guitar, or any other Ibanez guitars for that matter, hit that Sweetwater affiliate link down below in the description of this video, because not only will you be buying a new guitar and having a great day, but you'll be helping me out at the same time, and I really appreciate it. All right guys, so with that out of the way, let's get into the specs of this guitar. There is a lot going on in this guitar that uh, I have never experienced before. And I'm actually pretty excited for that because as much as I love my tunematic bridges and my single cuts with maple tops and 24 and three quarter inch scales, I also love experiencing new things. So let's start off with the body. The body of this guitar is made with Nyato, Nyato, Nyato. I'm pretty sure it's Nyato wood. And whether you believe that tone wood makes a difference or not, I can say that it makes a difference in weight at least because this guitar comes in under eight pounds. It's really light, but it's also well balanced. And I've never played a guitar with Nyato wood before, so pretty excited to see how this thing sounds. 
For the finish, we have Ibanez's Blue Chameleon finish. And honestly, this is the first thing that drew me to this guitar in the first place. This guitar has actually been on my radar for a couple years since it was released because it's just got a simple, stripped down, super strat look to it. And it's really, really eye catching. My fiance, who absolutely hates everything to do with guitars because I'm an obsessive idiot, actually liked this one enough when she saw it sitting in the living room that she made a comment saying, I really like that guitar, you should keep that one. She doesn't ever say that. So if you're trying to pick up chicks, guys, this is the one. So moving on to the hardware on this guitar, this is another piece of, you know, equipment or something. I don't know, words. This is another thing that I have never experienced before. This is a uh, Ibanez Gibraltar 2 bridge. This is a hardtail guitar, as you can see. There is no trim cavity in the back. This is a hardtail bridge. And it also has these interesting saddles that have a little bit of a curve to them. And honestly, I don't know how much I love that. I kind of love the feel of more traditional saddles that have a sharper edge and you can feel where the string ends a little bit. This is like really, really smooth. It almost reminds me of like a wrap tail bridge. Moving on to the pickups, we've got the Fishman Fluence Modern Ceramic and Alnico pickups. These are very polarizing, uh, honestly. I've noticed at least being active in a lot of the metal guitar forums and groups on Facebook. People either love the Fishman Fluence pickups or they hate them. I am the exception to the rule because I'm kind of in between, it really depends. What I'm trying to say is I have a bigger brain and I am a superior human being to all of you. But overall, I find myself liking them, especially when it comes to down tuning. We've got the ceramic in the bridge and the Alnico in the neck as stated. Um, on the guitar for the controls, we've got a three-way switch, but we've also got the push pull volume pot that enacts the passive and active voicings on these pickups. And then we've also got the coil split or the coil tap. Again, I don't ever remember the difference because I'm not an idiot who uses single coils in the first place, but if you're that type of idiot, it's right here on the guitar and you can actually tap into just one of the coils of these pickups. So lots of features going on here. Two different voicings and the ability to split the pickups to single coils. I think that's pretty cool for a guitar in this price range, which we will get to in a moment. Moving on to the neck, we have something weird that I gotta look up again because I don't remember what it is. A five piece panga panga and walnut neck on this guitar. I have never experienced that type of wood again. So this body and neck of this guitar are like completely new to me. And we have a nice open pour finish on this neck. And honestly, I love the look of natural uh, backs of necks, especially when they have some sort of cool or exotic wood. So I think that's an eye catcher, even if you're not really looking at the back of the guitar very much. And the shape of that neck is the Wizard Nitro, which of course being not an Ibanez guy, I have no idea what that means, but apparently it is a thin neck because that is what the Wizards are, but it's not as thin as some of the crazy shredder necks on the Ibanez of yesteryear, which to me that is welcome because I tend to like chunkier necks anyways. And honestly, not one point did I grab the neck on this guitar and feel like this was some crazy thin shredder neck. This is a 25 and a half inch scale and we've got a single white binding on either side of the neck. And then moving on to the fretboard, this is actually an ebony fretboard, but it hasn't been dyed or stained or polished or anything like that. And the one that I got, I actually think looks really, really cool because it is, it's got this big streak that goes all the way down the fretboard that I think is really cool. It kind of snakes its way back and forth. And I think it gives the guitar a really cool character. Now we've got 24 frets total. We've got lumen lay markers uh, all along the side here as well. I forgot to mention that during the binding, but the cool part about the frets, and I think one of the coolest parts about this guitar is these are sub-zero frets, meaning you can perform fatalities with this guitar. So the Sub-Zero frets have been cryogenically treated in order to make the metal harder, which means that the frets will actually last longer. You'll get more life out of these frets. And on a guitar in the $1,000 range, that is honestly, in my opinion, a really, really cool feature because a lot of the times you get cheaper fret wire on these cheaper guitars that wears out pretty quickly. Uh, that's not gonna be the case here. These frets are gonna last you a long time. One area where I do have to knock this guitar as far as features though is they just give you a regular old plastic nut. I can't understand why you wouldn't get some sort of graph tech or at least just a graphite nut on a guitar like this with all the other cool specs and features going on. Uh, 
That seems like a small oversight to some, but for me, like a graphite nut is a must, especially if it's a graph tech at this point, because that is where most of your tuning stability lies in any guitar. So to just put a cheap plastic nut is kind of like a, a stupid cop out in my opinion. So plastic nut bad. Up top to the headstock, we have a matching finish on the headstock, which I think is a nice touch. Uh, you guys are gonna make fun of me for this. I know I'm like way behind, but truss rod cover. I've never seen this before literally pivots open and you don't have to get in there with a screwdriver to do your truss rod adjustment. So for guitars that still have the truss rod adjustment up at the headstock, that's the way to do it, man. Like that is a really cool feature for me and I actually love that. So really cool if you're somebody who works on your own guitars, such as I do even though I probably shouldn't. All right guys, last but not least, on the back of the guitar, another nice touch. We have Goto locking tuners. And again, a guitars in this price range, to have a brand name locking tuner on this, I think is great. And that brings me to what I think is one of the best points about this guitar, and that's the price point, guys. You are getting all of this for a thousand bucks. These guitars are a thousand dollars brand new. So think of all the other guitars in the thousand dollar price range. It's gonna be kind of hard to find something that is going to be able to match this in terms of features, in terms of brand name hardware, brand name pickups, especially these Fishman Fluence. These are not cheap pickups to buy. You get the cryogenically treated frets, you get brand name Goto locking tuners, a Gibraltar bridge. Like nothing on this guitar is generic other than the stupid nut and you're paying a thousand bucks. So really, really good value in my opinion. Really a big fan of all the specs on this and the cool body woods. We're about to see how those sound because none of these specs matter if this guitar doesn't sound good. So it's time to riff a little ditty or two. Here we go. All right guys, so I have the Ibanez RG631 ALF connected to three high gain monsters here and we are gonna check out this guitar, check out some of the sounds through these three different amplifiers. We are going through a Friedman Vintage 30 loaded 212 cabinet. We have an SM57 on that Vintage 30 and there will be no post-processing. The intro clip that you heard to this video, I was going into the Marshall JCM2000 DSL50 and we were boosting it with the MXR M77. Let's hear how this thing does on some slightly lower gain stuff. Not that I really think that many people who are using Fishman Moderns are going to be doing that, but let's try it anyways. So those are your cleans. Let's get past that nonsense because nobody cares about cleans. Let's go into our crunch channel. I gotta be honest, that doesn't sound bad at all. How's it sound if we roll the volume off a little bit? That's actually really nice because it doesn't take away a lot of the treble frequencies, which often happens when you roll the volume down on a lot of passive pickups. So it's pretty cool. Let's kick it into the active mode.
So a little bit more focus, a little bit more mid forward. Some of those highs and rolls have been load off, load off rolled off we've got more output overall so i really think the passive voicing is going to be great for those lower gain tones i'm actually kind of surprised at how much i liked it wasn't really expecting that but let's go ahead let's go to the reason that you're really here i don't even know why i'm dicking around with this stuff let's get into belligerent amateur zone we are on the ultra gain channel and we are on gain one <laughs> Passive voicing. All right, so the passive voicing again, a little bit more high, a little bit more low, less output. Sounds pretty good going straight into the amp. The Fishman Fluence Modern Ceramic to me has always been a very hi-fi sounding pickup. Uh, the top and the bottom, especially in the active modes, are very prevalent, whereas the mids are kind of almost like scooped out. But we can right the ship by kicking in an overdrive. <laughs> So that feels nice. I will say it's a little hollow, maybe needs a little bit more in the presence frequencies. All right, so that's the passive. Let's go into the active. Lots of chord clarity and definition. Uh, again, a little on the hi-fi side for my personal taste, but if you're getting into more modern styles of music, that's gonna sound right at home or feel right at home. You're gonna be right at home. Let's move over to the 5150. So on the 5150, definitely way more mids going on, way more of a MIDI quackiness type thing. We are still in the active setting. Uh, we've got the MXR on. Let's pull it out to the passive voicing and see how that sounds. So the passive setting, definitely more my speed, at least in E standard. It's punchier, it's a little bit more open, a little less hi-fi sounding, just sounds more natural and it just punches, especially on those palm mutes. But let's try a drop tuning like drop C in the active voicing. I think that that's where this guitar is gonna sound really good in that active setting. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so that sounds cool. Some notes on the playability of the guitar. You guys may notice the tuning uh, seems a little bit off in certain spots. I think this guitar needs intonated. I have not done anything with the action or the setup of this guitar since I pulled it out of the box a couple of weeks ago, other than make sure that the neck was straight. I've been having issues with a couple of the strings getting them perfectly in tune, so I think that this is gonna need me to intonate it when I change the strings. I will also say the strings are cut a little bit high off the nut, so that leads to sometimes bending a note out of tune. If you're pushing down, I kind of push down a little hard. That's obviously not good. That's why I play thicker strings for the most part. But on a guitar with a higher cut nut like this, you'll have the tendency to bend notes out of tune. Uh, the fretboard feels nice and smooth, and I love the feel of that natural neck with the open pour. I think it feels really cool when you're playing. It gives it some texture, uh, definitely not sticky whatsoever. So in that aspect, I'm really, really enjoying the way this feels. When we go to the fret ends, the fret ends on this thing, they feel new, meaning that they don't feel like played in, they don't feel rounded off, but they're not sharp and they are not protruding from the neck at all. And like I said, this thing has had a couple weeks to settle here. It is currently basically winter in Erie, PA. We've had snow on the ground for the last couple of days. And even so, with the heater going constantly, it hasn't dried this thing out to where there's any fret sprout. Intonation changes with the weather, intonation changes with the strings and everything. So keep that stuff in mind. That's stuff that you typically have to do. But as of right now, I feel like the guitar is very enjoyable to play. And uh, I'm actually really excited to see how it sounds on the rectifier, which is where we're going next. I ended that like I was gonna say something else, that's it. Okay guys, rectifier modern channel, still in drop C, still have that MXR overdrive on. <laughs> So nice and punchy on the rectifier. Actually, really, I think I like it best on this amp out of the three. One thing that I have always noticed about these Fishman Fluence pickups is that the single note stuff really sticks out. And I think that's what they're aimed. They're aimed more for the modern player who's playing a lot more single note stuff than rhythm chords and stuff like that. So I think that that's where they excel if that's your type of thing. Let's go back up into standard tuning and check out that passive voicing and call it a day on this amp and this guitar and this video. That's gonna do it for me today on the Ibanez Axion Label RG 631 ALF. This is where I leave it up to you guys. Tell me what you thought about this guitar down in the comments and I'll be sure to meet you down there to talk about it. And if you wanna pick up this guitar, you wanna pick up any of the amplifiers or the overdrives, the microphones, anything that I use in this video, hit that Sweetwater affiliate link. Hitting that link really helps out the channel because not only do I earn a commission off of anything that you grab from that link, but it also tells Sweetwater that you guys are actually watching my videos and allows stuff like this, this guitar to happen. So. With that being said, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, hit that like button. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another amp. There we go.